All right, good evening, guys. Kind of Tortoise Capital Nightly Strategy Podcast for April 9th, 2024. Start with the 30 minute hybrid swing portfolio. Um, this is Alcoa. 30 minutes. This one started with a gap up and then failed. So I got short when it crossed the VWAP and was getting ready to test the five-day uh, anchored VWAP standard risk. On the recovery, I captured 1R. And then it kind of stabilized all the rest of the day. AI, Collapsing Dragon, sold off. I was up a little over an R and settled for half on the rebound. Took it at the skin of the dragon. Caterpillar uh, tried a Collapsing Dragon, captured three. Then uh, went across the spine of the dragon. I felt like I had missed. Uh, so I got in anyway, standard risk. Just went sideways in and I missed the move up. So scratch on the second trade. Cliff, uh, collapsing dragon. I was up 3R at one point, settled for one. And when it came back to the VWAP, CVS, this was kind of like a perfect grinding collapse. Like the ice broke here at the 270-day anchored VWAP. And it was a collapsing dragon. And it gave 2R on just a miserable grind. And there was no evidence of buying pressure on the other side. And this is part of the overall weakness that we've seen in um, healthcare. So I would not be surprised to see the sell-off accelerate tomorrow because we are below the uh, five-day anchored VWAP and the 30-day anchored VWAP and the 270. So uh, this has every every evidence of being miserable. Uh, DIA was a collapsing dragon here below the, with the PSAR flip. It sold off all the way to 386. I took the one, two, three exit on the recovery. Uh, I didn't want to wait for it to come back to scratch. So we captured an R. Now the afternoon move closed really well. So uh, I think there's a good chance that tomorrow we see it testing the five day and the 30 day anchored VWAPs uh, and the it went from winter to spring and the um, we got a, a rising set of lows here on the MACD and the RL30 reversed uh, so uh, there could be a stealth move early in DIA so I'll be ready for that on the long side uh, Disney a fractional gain on an uh, this is a Kata 2 on the PSAR flip. There's a low, there's a higher low. There's the PSAR flip crossing the Bollinger Band main. Target was the five-day VWAP, but it only got halfway, started to stall. So just don't lose money. Don't hold it overnight. Devon Energy tried the short, ended up scratching and missed the afternoon move. Uh, emerging markets, I missed I missed the, uh, the sell-off and I missed the little recovery. Um, span of control issue. ETHE, uh, the, yesterday's 16% gain, gap down, sold off, and then started a slow recovery. Uh, I'm looking for uh, gains tomorrow because I think it held above all of the previous resistance. It's above the five-day uh, and the Bollinger Band is rising, so is the RL10. Uh, I like the recovery here in ETHE gonna rebuild my position uh mexico this was the uh the big directional move that we're not surprised when it happens um, you get the rl10 rolling over you got the rl30 rolling over you got the dragon rolling over you either get in here on the um one two three short if you're using the 10-minute charts, it's really obvious. We'll see in a minute. Or you get short here at the PSAR 
and then there's plenty of time to get this move. And because it violated the five-day VWAP, it would not surprise me to see the weakness continue to get back around 69 and a quarter or down to 69 tomorrow, which is where the real test of support would be. So more to follow on Mexico. Uh, Brazil had a gap up and uh, I got long. It bounced and I failed for one hour. I gave back too much on that one, I think. And then I missed the afternoon move. It did close very well at the top, at the high of the day. And it's above the 270 and the 30 and the five days. So uh, I really feels like uh, Brazil has some legs to the upset. I just uh, lost an R on it today, though. Home Depot, no follow through from yesterday. So I'm still on the sidelines. Intel, uh, a scratch. I like that it's finding support here in the PSAR flip and it held. And the VWAP is curling up. And we have some nice clear targets on the five day and 30 day and 270 day anchored VWAP to shoot for. This feels like a uh, short term bottom in Intel. And I like the long side as a value play here. Yeah. IP, um, I tried the short, lost half an hour and missed the afternoon move. Um, real estate, this was an orderly emerging dragon and closed very well. And I took an R out. And I think there's more available tomorrow. It can get up here and test the 10 day high. So I like that one for tomorrow. Uh, Coke, uh, I tried the, uh, the breakout from this consolidation zone that's like a cot of two entry standard risk it closed very well i elected to hold this tomorrow it has a lot of ground to make up clear target here at the 30-day vwap and uh and i've got about two r in hand as a cushion so i'm liking the opportunity for a favorable gap tomorrow uh regional banks sideways chop for a scratch mcdonald's uh this was much like um uh Coke in that I'm going to play this for the uh, recovery off of this three-day support level and aim for a uh, recovery back to like 276. I like this. I like the way it closed, so I'm going to hold that overnight. And we captured 2R on that one, which is a cushion. 3M, no trade. Merck, no trade. I like their afternoon recovery. Microsoft, this was a sleigh ride. Uh, I took the short on the PSAR flip. Uh, and then got chased out of it here for a fractional gain. I was too volatile on the 30 minute for me to get into. And the late afternoon move looks favorable for tech, which is kind of like the reason I like Intel right now. I, uh, I think tech is in the midst of uh, recovering and uh, Intel's an easier uh, value play right now. But Microsoft looks promising for tomorrow. Um, marijuana was a scratch. So I tried to cut it too. Nike, uh, an orderly recovery for one R, and I'm expecting more tomorrow. That's a really nice orderly reversal here, and we've got two pieces of it already. And I think tomorrow, if it continues up, it's time to get larger on it. Uh, captured an R short in Nvidia on the big sell off. This was. We were up almost 4 R at one point, and I just uh, was sloppy and letting that get away. Um, and that looks promising for tech tomorrow. If you think, of, I think of that as like a uh, a sell-off low here, uh, capturing inventory, and then it's got a long way to go to get back to uh, um, that double top up there. This feels like an opportunity uh, in NVIDIA, so I'll be watching that one tomorrow. Clean Energy tried the short scratched uh, Palantir um, of mixed. I, I like it for the very long term. Uh, if this holds tomorrow, I'm going to, I'm going to try it. If it gets past 23, if it gets above the five day, uh, I'm going to enter long and look to get back to the uh, five day high. Rivian tried the emerging dragon and then lost a fraction that was sloppy to, to lose money on that. And then I, was not in the zero state, could not get the afternoon move. But that also looks favorable. The slope of the five-day anchored VWAP is reversing. The river has reversed. The OWL RL30 has reversed. Everything's looking up, actually. So I should be more positive on that than I am. 
S-O-U-N, still too early to tell. This is a real speculative one. Um, this, These are the guys that are partnered with NVIDIA for AI. Uh, I'd like to see 475 hold as support. Uh, I could give us a speculative intraday try if it gets above the PSR flip and call that uh, 490. Um, the S&P was a sleigh ride down, bounced off the 30 and recovered actually really nicely. And uh, that could lead to some momentum shift uh, for tomorrow. I like it on the long side. Treasuries were stable. Tesla uh, was an initial burst up. I tried it long. Uh, preserved an R on the sell-off, but it closed well. That's actually favorable for tech tomorrow as well. Uh, Walmart, nothing. Uh, U.S. Steel was a two-position long off an SSC entry. This is just sort of classic, and this is the follow-through. And then what I've got, uh, like, that's a net of 5R. I don't want to risk any of that, particularly when it's right at the level that it uh, collapsed the previous two times. So that's put five in the bank and sleep comfortably at night. XLI, I missed the big sell-off all the way down to support. And but I did get the one, two, three recovery entry. So I missed most of the volatility, but I did capture two on that inside move right there. Um, and uh, I don't want to hold that overnight. So pretty satisfied with today. A couple sloppy plays, but I think tomorrow promises to be a quiet up day. Uh, looking for tech leadership. Mm, let's see what I want to get to. Let's go to. Um, All right, so this is uh, this is clean energy PBW, the sniper trade of the day, and uh, PBW. So we're on three minute, and this is just to show about trade framing. So this was yesterday's close, and yesterday's closing VWAP right here. Today it gapped up and took off, and uh, we got the. The crossing of the VWAP there with the standard risk, it ran up, took the PSAR exit, uh, and then this is a one, two, three entry to the downside. So if I'm using that as my standard risk, which is the same as this risk, then my targets to the downside would be back to the VWAP and the Bollinger Band mean, and that's basically a 2R move. And then I could see it getting to my my entry, the a new low of the day, um, the uh, uh, yesterday's VWAP, and then yesterday's close. So all of these little purple dots represent price targets that I would not be surprised if it could get there. And after this initial burst up, uh, the downside recovery could gain momentum the further it goes. So I'm willing to speculate on that one. And especially we've got a little cushion of markets money of a couple R in hand. So I can put one of them, one unit of risk of markets money, keep one, put one at work, and then aim for that. Check or hold. So that's a situational trade where uh, I'm, I'm, risking markets money on that reversal. And the reason that's justified, PBW is a really volatile intraday trader. It's one of our top three, remember, because we got uh, Tesla, PBW, and marijuana as the three most reliably volatile intraday. So this thing is an active trader. Um, it sells off hard, comes all the way down. So this was a fast move, monkeyed around here and then broke down to this level. So it gets back to the the last place we got long and then it kind of stabilizes. Then you get a PSAR flip and I get filled right here. So we end up collecting, you know, two R. And now we've got a new VWAP right here. 
to contend with. So I go ahead and try that one again, since it held, since it had an, from this price level, it had a nice move. This feels like a significant support level. So maybe we can get that. That's the speculation. And then if you're using this one as your risk box, that's a standard risk. And then the downside would be a 2R move back to yesterday's close. So if this fails, we can take it short from here. So otherwise, you know, so our trade frame looks like that. We're long from here, looking to get back to here. But if it fails, we'll get short there, hoping to get to here. Check or hold. It gets halfway, so we collect an R, and that's a. And then I miss the re-entry. Now, just notice how symmetrical, you know, this move is. And if you've got a couple, two or three R in the normal channel, you can you can trade that as long as you take an appetite suppressant pill and you just you 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 measure your risk carefully. So so pretty good set of trades, uh, I felt um, on that one. All right, so here's an opportunity trade. This is in uh, what is this uh, U.S. Steel. Okay, so U.S. Steel, this is an opportunity trade. And uh, this is one that occurs. Here's yesterday's close. It gaps up to here, sells off to yesterday's close, gets halfway back to the high, to the V, and this is the VWAP. Comes back down to here, holds again. There's your PSAR flip. There's the crossing of the Bollinger Band mean. I entered when it crossed the VWAP. That's an R10. So that means I've got nine of those available to the upside if we get a range stat move. So I'm willing to go long from here. Standard risk. If this collapses, I'm going to be short big time because then my move is here's the high of the day so far, and I can get one, two, three. That means there's still plus seven of those to the downside for a range stat move. So this is a nice critical state. Don't know which way it's going to go, but I'm ready to play in either direction with this as the noise channel. Check or hold. Probably should have had a second position in on that one. Just follow the breadcrumbs. Exit here. One unit of risk, 3R. Standard work. Cotta 2 re-entry, standard risk. Holding support with the PSAR. Take the PSAR exit. And that's 7R in U.S. Steel.
All right, this is uh, Jonathan. He's given an, this is EWW. EWW is the symbol he's trading. Here's yesterday's close. It gets a gap up and go. He takes the OR3 entry, preserves at 0. 0.4. When it breaks below the VWAP and the R10 is rolled over, he takes the one, two, three short. It hits the Bollinger Band main and recovers. So he preserves 0.54. That's 0.9 just on getting two fractional trades. It hits the VWAP and rolls over again. So he gets a cot of two to the short side, cashes a little piece, takes the collapsing dragon when it fails, gives back a half. Tries the SSC here, scratches, collapsing dragon, Hulk smash, second position, PSAR exit for four, and totals four for the day. Perfectly played. Um, that was on uh, 10, if I'm remembering, 10 minutes. No, oh, three minute. He's doing three minute bars on that one. Uh, Kevin is using 30 minute bars on EWW. He picks up 3.8 with basically the short side trade. Um, he, on the 30 minutes, is um, he gets this gap up and roll over. He gets the PSAR short for a fraction. And then the re entry, Hulk smash. He gets 0.7 and 3.1 for a total of 3.8. And uh, and had there was more available, but uh, notice the power of the VWAP to it. After a period of outperformance, when it collapses, the VWAP acts as a big mag to bring it back. So when there's no buying pressure to buy on the dip, the sellers get it all the way back to the, to the middle of the... Uh, of the value chain here, the the VWAP. So the VWAP is a powerful magnet. Uh, George is trading Alcoa on the 10 minute. Um, here's a yesterday's close. Great big gap up. So we know this is in play. It gets a runaway move to the upside, rolls over. Here's where it crashes through the VWAP. He gets a one, two, three entry short here. Uses a uh, about a 30 cent risk box. Sells off hard. He takes a one, two exit, exiting near this um, skin of the dragon and cashes 1.4. Nice as you please. Uh, and then this is essentially the same trade in another industrial company, IP on 10 minute charts. Here's the, it opens normally, runs way up, collapses. When the R10 rolls over and it crosses the VWAP, I would argue you might have been able to get short here on that kind of a signal when it rejects that upward breakout. Uh, this is still a really good entry because it gets it at where it's crossing the lower skin of the dragon and crossing the VWAP, or I'm, I'm sorry, the uh, Bollinger Band main. And he gets a, uh, this might have even been a uh, a half a bar or a bar late. Um, I think we, I think when this reverses here, that's a pretty good exit. This is probably where you get slippage, but he captures this piece for 0.6. So 2R for the day and uh, very nice work as he's experimenting with the 10-minute bars that we are, we were worked through some of that yesterday in the um, small group coaching. Uh, getting ready to start up a new cohort with that. Uh, if you're interested and you want to work in that cohort together, the boys are finding that it's very helpful to have an accountability group um, and get coaching in the round, if you will, and meets one night a week for an hour or an hour and a half. Uh, if you're interested in that, 
and want to sign up for this new cohort. Uh, I That's the last new cohort I'll probably add until uh, probably September. Um, there's a limit to the number number of groups that I can manage. So this is a chance to get in the spring. All right, let's look at the... Um, The daily reports. Sorry. Uh, had a nice little recovery today. Normal sized daily range. It's still very close to that all time high. It held above the uh, the Bollinger Band main, so this is it's not out of the woods yet, but um, um, we have not seen the big failure yet. Cautiously optimistic. This was the uh, this was the this was the open, and here was the test of the Bollinger. Bollinger Band mean, and then a nice recovery to this level. So don't know what tomorrow brings, but if it breaks above the upper skin of the dragon uh, and then the PSAR break tomorrow will be here, that's the all-time high. So it doesn't take much to regenerate all the optimism. This is where optimism hits at above, call that 524 and a half. It's that close to a runaway move and there's been you know 10 to 12 days of sideways chop so if that all gets resolved above and makes a new all-time high that's going to act like a steam valve and watch this thing go um if that um to me i'm still concerned about the bollinger band mean today's low and then the 10 day low this is a that's a pretty important support level. If it breaks below 512, this thing collapses pretty hard back to here. So we're not out of the woods yet, but uh, tomorrow's gonna be an interesting day. Um, lots of volatility on the 30 minute. Look at, look at these oscillations. This is a market that's in the middle of testing. It is testing the resolve. Here's the 30 day anchored VWAP. So as long as it's staying north of that, it's still okay. But uh, interesting times. Uh, bullish normal, overbought long-term. It Volatility is saying risk off, be careful. Don't take big, bold positions because uh, this can break either way. It's a trader's delight tomorrow. Um, lots of positivity in the uh, in the Dow. Lots of good long range targets here on the auto framer. Um, lots of good targets breaking out on the ETFs. You got uh, emerging markets, Brazil, uh, lithium, and metals continue to look good. That's your standard markup for auto framers and squeezes. Um, being dominated by summer and fall. So that's generally positive and a rebound will find support. And actually the global ETFs look a little better than the large cap stocks, which are, there's still a lot of really good names that are suffering here. I just, I think Intel's the one that really attracts me as a value play because tech has been bad. You know, here's, uh, where's my tech at? Yeah. Yeah. Tech is in the winter, and Intel's been really bad, but today looked a little bit promising, so I think that's the value play in tech. Microsoft, I think, will be the tell that it's firmly in the fall, but if so, if Microsoft can go summer, fall, and recover. That will be a signal that tech 
is going, that's going to be an, that's an important tell right now. If Microsoft works, you'll see XLK and the Q's both working. So Microsoft is like the canary in the cold mine to me. Uh, Devon Energy surprised me with its strength today. Here's that. Here's the Intel deep value play to me. It's lurking, ready to go. Here's the tech leader, Microsoft, that's postured a little better. Cisco showed some signs of life. Maybe that's what I should be looking at. Hamburgers and Coca-Cola is favorable. Uh, and then this is pretty strong here. But just notice that these are all internationals and defensive plays. Uh, Brazil showed some evidence of support today. Uh, whereas Mexico looks more like it's at the end of a run. And I expect that to generate some uh, trading action tomorrow. I think Mexico is still in play. Is all of these is of all of this goodness vulnerable because of that? I don't know. That's either a buy on dip opportunity or the beginning of a long swing slide. So that's why Mexico's an attractive trader tomorrow. Standard big three, Tesla, marijuana, clean energy. So Intel remains in that uh, very tradable category here with a really nice intraday volatility almost as much as Tesla. So that's not bad. All right, that's everything for today. We'll get this published and posted. Well, let's take a look at this last one. Yeah, uh, still on the edge of breakouts or breakdowns. This is a critical state for the market here the next day or so. I like that there was a little bit of stability here. And the 30 has pulled back enough that this could be rebound city, and that would be a cot of two. And the RL90 has cooled off without a panic sell-off. So that's that's actually a healthy sign. All right, take good care. We'll get this published and posted and be ready for them tomorrow. you got brother i just uh sent you over it's just a rough of the uh the prop book okay intro intro to prop trading book um like i said i'm just skeleton we can flush it out any way that we okay. want to um you know i can i can do some that's that's the uh that's the book and the course on uh proprietary trading that uh, you're working with Constantine to produce. Oh yeah, for the well, people. Yeah, I didn't I didn't know if we were going to use his name, but. <laughs> um, well, yeah. yeah, his last name's protected. Yeah, so, uh, I, the kind of what I've been thinking about it is, uh, you know, how do we treat the subjects in the book, and then get real world, uh, reflection and insight from him. Okay. Let me turn off the recording and talk about that.